Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chong. Uh, so, hi, I, I am Zakia here. So, today I was invited by UPM Kit uh, to share on how uh, I develop my e-portfolio using Adobe Portfolio platform. But before we proceed with our session today, I, I would like to remind you, I, I am very sorry if uh, during the session, you can hear some voice from outside. Bunyi ayam ke, bunyi angsa ke, because I need to work from my kitchen area because this is the place where the signal is, uh, the best signal of Unify I, I can get. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, let us uh, start with our course today. Um, so, uh, in shortly, I will demonstrate uh, to you on how to create a new site, uh, designing and uploading uh, some teaching material as well as how to add embed file from other platform to Adobe Portfolio as our e-portfolio. So our session today will be more on hands-on activities. But before that, I have prepared a simple introduction slide for us to understand why we must change our conventional way of producing portfolio into more interactive and more accessible e-portfolio. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, teaching e-portfolio is a medium for us to move uh, from conventional way of recording and compiling our teaching and learning journey to more easier to access, portable that we can carry to anywhere or everywhere and can be transformed into so many files, different files that later we can share it using uh, sharing links or we can also add our link to any other platform such as uh, Putra Blast. Uh, we also can generate the QR code and embed code from the link we created. So uh, I will share with you on how we can add our e-portfolio to Putra Blast or to add our public posting in Facebook into our e-portfolio platform. Yeah. Uh, currently, most of us are preparing and recording our teaching and learning materials uh, from uh, from the from the what we call it a more more heavy format, uh, such as in the form of book or report. And of course, uh, normally we will produce in very limited copy and it difficult to access in terms of how we can share with other with, uh, with our student or with public. Um, so we can see that uh, most of us also prepare this teaching and uh, learning portfolio because it is compulsory uh, when we uh, when we take our induction course on KAP. This is a very similar to what and why I did my portfolio before. Uh, I must say that based on the experience, it takes a lot of time, effort, and sometimes require me to be more creative in designing, composing, as well as inserting the, the teaching materials. Okay, uh, this sometimes also demotivated me uh, to edit or to add any new materials uh, as the beginning of our teaching journey, maybe we'll still manage to allocate some times uh, to, to add, to edit, or to deal with the uh, formatting and editing uh, aspect. But what if uh, we already have more than 15 to 20 years of experience that we have a lot of innovation materials, we have a lot of teaching and learning materials. Are we willing to spend our time? Are we willing to spend our money to produce those kind of uh, good portfolio? So um, I think uh, by, by having a new platform such as the Adobe portfolio, 
So we can uh, we can easily to edit as well as to add any any new materials into our portfolio. Um, not only that, the conventional way of teaching portfolio also will cost us in terms of the money and also time. So we, if, if we have a lot of materials, we tend to be selective and we, we try to cut the printing costs. We try to, to reduce the pages so that, uh, because we, we try to avoid uh, more than one volume or we, we try to avoid a thick report uh, so that it is a more easy to carry. Uh, so moving from conventional way of teaching portfolio to e-portfolio, E portfolio platform is actually seems the best approach uh, to overcome those issues. Uh, to be to be honest, uh, at first I didn't think at all to have my e portfolio until my former dean, uh, Professor Dr. Ahmad Zaharin, advised and encouraged me to start compiling and also. Uh, putting uh, some effort to create a new e uh, portfolio in the Adobe portfolio. So I think if he listening to this, thank you Prof, because I know I, I now I'm sharing your advice to other as well, uh, because there is no harm to invest uh, your time and effort to create your own portfolio. Uh, having a platform to create uh, our teaching e-portfolio is actually the most beautiful uh, benefit from the digital world today. Uh, we not only can track record our teaching and learning journey, but it also solves so many issues that we face du during uh, dealing with the conventional way of producing our portfolio. We can share our experience at the same time, uh, student and public easy to access uh, our portfolio, and effortlessly, we can uh, carry our portfolio everywhere or anywhere. There's a lot of other benefits that we can discuss here, uh, including on how interactive e-portfolio can be, how it will help us in organizing and recording our teaching materials. I must say that it can come as easy as 15 minutes uh, to create because uh, if we choose the right platform to start with, we are already provided with the uh, existing layout features that no need for us to think on how to compose or to design. As my personal preference, uh, ePortfolio gives me the same experience of uh, posting any Facebook post or blogging. And uh, sometimes I also can share my real-time teaching and learning activities as well. So for me, it is a both fun and easy to create and publish uh, my own teaching portfolio using Adobe Portfolio site. Uh, I recently went through the process and found that not only was uh, my teaching portfolio easy to create, it was also a great exercise to go back through my teaching and learning materials, um, organizing them into a body of work, as well as a look on the relationship between how I see experience and documenting the teaching uh, materials. Okay, uh, there is some key aspect of Adobe Portfolio as an introduction. Uh, this Adobe Portfolio is uh, come with a domain, a custom domain, where you can have your unique ID or unique link like uh, Mine is zakiapunrano.myportfolio.com. Even you can uh, you can buy or you can purchase the domain uh, to 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 drop the my portfolio uh, words in your link later on. So this one will be easier for you to remember, easier for you to share with other people as well. And then um, this Adobe portfolio is actually can be seen with your Behance account or Lightroom accounts. At the moment, I didn't have any other account in Adobe Creative Cloud like Lightroom. So if you have those, you can sync your existing works uh, with the Adobe portfolio. And this Adobe portfolio also come in responsive design features. So if you 
already choose uh, some layout and you already put adding up uh, whatever materials you have inside the portfolio. So uh, the end product of the website itself can be seen nicely and professional, uh, professionally in any devices. So it will uh, responsively uh, fit to either your desktop layout or your uh, smartphone layout, for example. And of course, the, the best part of uh, this Adobe portfolio, because they already have uh, so many or multiple neat themes uh, for us to choose. So you don't, do not, uh, do not worry to, to think on how I, I, I can produce a good or nice design or beautiful design of portfolio. So basically it is very easy for everyone and uh, we don't need to require, uh, they don't need require us to, to learn on the coding part. So you just adding up your uh, materials, that's it. Okay. Uh, next. I think uh, that's all the introduction on the benefit of having ePortfolio and um, what is the key features of Adobe Portfolio can give us. Uh, so maybe we can move to our uh, demonstration part, which is uh, to create the site using Adobe Portfolio. But first of all, I think uh, for those who are uh, uh, enrolling this course we are using your laptop maybe easy for you to access your own uh, teaching materials in the form of images audios or videos uh, but for those who are not uh, enrolling this course uh, using laptop but using your phone i already prepared the quick guide on how later you can try to exercise by your own uh, in creating this uh, e-portfolio. Uh, so uh, maybe another thing is uh, maybe you can open one uh, public Facebook post and as well as any YouTube link that you think you want to add as your part of the uh, teaching material to be inserted into the uh, portfolio adobe.com. And of course, you need to go to the, uh, you need to access to the Adobe portfolio uh, using portfolio.adobe.com later on. I think that's all. So maybe we can start to do it together. Can you see my, okay. Hi, Dr. Takia. Yeah. Uh, th there's a few questions here so far. All right. Okay. okay. So one question is from uh, Dr. Muhammad Haika Ismail. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually asking whether uh, can we start to submit our portfolio online? Uh, that's why uh, that, that thing I cannot answer you. Probably uh, someone from Kate can answer uh, these questions uh, because I just uh, can share on how I develop. Previously, I, I submit my portfolio using uh, the hard copy one. I, I don't know the current uh, practice how. Okay, there's one uh, recommendation, suggestions for, by Prof M. Uh, okay. She said that uh, can try to relate the e-portfolios to teaching, especially like practicals like how students submitting the practical through e-portfolios. So especially we know you have done a lot of uh, uh, e-portfolio for your classes. So she suggests you uh, from time to time relate to your practical class. Yeah, right. this is the suggestion. Okay, okay. go ahead. Yes, okay. sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's okay. All right, uh, I will minimize this part because I want you to uh, see the 100% the, the the interface uh, from the desktop. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, this is my e-portfolio uh, from how, how I create my e-portfolio. This is the end product of, the, uh, of my e-portfolio, as you can see. Uh, this navigation part is actually where I develop- Sorry to interrupt, Dr. Zakia, yeah. uh, because currently the screen is still uh, 
with your PowerPoint presentation. Oh, I see. Okay, I, okay. I, I I, perhaps you can stop presenting, stop uh -huh. screen sharing, and then close your PowerPoint and then screen sharing again so okay. we can see your browser. All right, all right. Okay, sorry. All right, thanks. No problem. All right. Wait. Let me share. Oh, let's see. Okay, can you see the current uh, screen, Dr. Chong? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, this is the end product of my ePortfolio using Adobe uh, Adobe Portfolio. As you can see here, at this left side, uh, this is actually uh, the content inside my portfolio. Uh, you can imagine this uh, uh, navigation part as your table of content inside your hard copy portfolio. So as you can see, I put a... Uh, 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 the, the main section as a teaching and learning innovation and materials, I include all my teaching aids, uh, my module, uh, some of the learning, learning outcomes from the student as well. I have uh, some PSA video assignment from my student, uh, some alternative assessment that I, uh, I developed for my subjects as well as uh, this one is a student e-portfolio that currently is a part of the assignment given for EMG 3204 in uh, environmental planning studio one. As you can see, you can compile all the links that uh, submitted from your student into one interface. Like for example, this is uh, from one of the student. So you just click, so it will direct you to her uh, e-portfolio, like for example, this one, this is the first uh, mini project for the studio. So I can easily uh, access it and I can evaluate uh, the content inside it. Previously, uh, in studio class, I asked them to create the portfolio using a normal or conventional way. But later, I think it is very difficult for me to store their hard copy. So I changed from the hard copy to e-portfolio platform. I just want to show some of the uh, features that uh, you can make use of it. And I think it is easy for me. All right, uh, this one is the, uh, some PSA video assignment from the student from the YouTube link. So I just embed uh, the link and uh, collect it into one uh, one interface so I can see anytime or everywhere I, I want, okay? Uh, not only that, uh, I also developed a section for step-by-step -step or quick uh, quick guide on certain subject matters. Like uh, previously, I have a three uh, GIS uh, simple step uh, to do adding coordinates and so on. Like uh, for example, this one, so uh, I just uh, make it in the form of image. Uh, one disadvantage of this uh, e-portfolio is that uh, they didn't support a PDF or words format file. At the moment, uh, you can uh, upload your images or you can upload your videos uh, or, I, or audio. So this is an, another part. Don't worry if... Uh, people try to download or to plagiarize your work because you can disable the right click uh, for this uh, platform. So people only can screenshot uh, the interface but cannot download your materials at the moment. And you also able to put some password for certain pages that you want to share with a certain group of people only, okay? And then, not only that, using this platform, you also can uh, collect all the testimonial from your student, uh, from any, uh, like uh, if you get some good feedback, you can put it into one page as well, okay? 
And this one is actually uh, a Facebook page that I dedicated, uh, dedicated uh, Facebook page for a certain course that I teach currently. So you can do that in your e-portfolio. Not only that, you also can uh, link to your research profile. Like for example, this one. So in one, in one uh, website, you can have so many interactive activity or interactive information on what is your, uh, what is your work, what is your current uh, research work and so on, okay? And you also can put uh, a section for you to ask uh, your visit, if your visitor want to ask you something, we call it as a form. So you can put uh, uh, this uh, section so people can uh, directly give their feedback and comment. Um, another disadvantage of this e-portfolio is uh, there is no synchronized activity can be done. Everything is asynchronized so that you can put your, uh, your work, uh, your, your slide or your images, uh, but uh, you need to put this form for if you want your student give us some feedback or comment on that, okay? I think that's all for the overview of what is inside my e-portfolio. And as you can see, this is actually my teaching portfolio from 2007 to 2019 that I submit to uh, Kate uh, for my KAP and so on. So I, I uh, export it into image, images. So I just uh, put it as a uh, one section as the teaching portfolio 2017, 2019. Uh, this uh, conventional uh, portfolio, I did it using, uh, I, I produce it uh, using PowerPoint. And then from the PowerPoint file, so I export it as a uh, images. Then I add it as a part of the uh, materials or content in my teaching e-portfolio. Yeah, Dr. Takia, sorry to interrupt. Ah, so yeah. there's a uh, few questions here. So uh -huh. uh, there's several questions from the Zooms. They are mm -hmm. actually uh, asked by two doctors, Dr. Tan and Dr. Uh, Sabrina. They ask mm -hmm. what happens if UPM decided to end the subscriptions, like how long will UPM continue the subscription and what happened if they cancel the subscription? Uh, what happened to your portfolio? Another question from, uh, from you, two questions from YouTube. Uh, one is from Prof Ayani. Prof Ayani say this is a good uh, uh, webinar because it can go beyond teaching. Can e portfolio can be used in many many fields. And her question is uh, how like the student e portfolio and submission uh, is produced using other platforms, and then for example, Weebly, Google site, and then Doctor Zakia compiling the link. Is it correct? Uh, yes, true. Okay, another question from uh, Dr. Hisham is like, um, can you show us step by step how to create the e-portfolio? Uh, yes, yeah. of course. Uh, later I will uh, demonstrate uh, using uh, the first interface after you enter the Adobe portfolio uh, site. Uh, for the, the first questions on the subscription, right? Uh, okay, later I will share with you. Uh, if uh, if UPM decided to unsubscribe uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud, actually you, you can pay by your own. I think the pricing is not so, uh, so high. It just, uh, I think about $9, $9 per month, uh, something like that, if, you, if you're willing to subscribe. But your portfolio will be there. It's just that you cannot edit or add anymore. Uh, that's uh, that's only in terms of uh, how how you can manage your site, but whatever you have at the moment uh, inside your e-portfolio content, that will be there lah. Uh, okay. Not deleted. Okay. There's a, 
for that questions, I do a quick Google search uh, for Adobe. They have an answer if let's say we cancel the subscriptions uh, in future. Uh, once we cancel, we still have uh, two gig storage for free level of membership. But we have only 90 days to download to our local mm. machine, local team. Okay, uh, there's a few questions here okay. before you show us step by step. So uh, several questions here from Zooms. One is like, um, should we have a dedicated Facebook for each subject? And uh, this is from Dr. Sharifa. And yeah. then there's one question uh, from Dr. No Rohaiza. She mm. asked if, if there's someone post a comment or a questions in your e-portfolio, will you be notified immediately? Is, the, is it through emails or through message of the e-portfolio? Okay. Uh, first, I answer on the, uh, if someone send you a comment or feedback. Actually, at the moment, uh, it will directly to your email address only. Uh, so, it is not immediate if you didn't always uh, go through your email address. Lah. Uh, and then the second one is it I'm, uh, have, uh, I'm having a dedicated page from each subject I teach. Eh? Okay, actually at the moment, I only have uh, two subject, two page for my subject. The first one is EMG3203 and EMG4202. For the studio works, normally I will share directly uh, in my album, Facebook only. Uh, because I think um, uh, for studio work, it, it is more on the, uh, the output is more on the graphic part. Uh, so sometimes I, uh, I, I just share it uh, through my personal uh, Facebook account only. Okay. So I think I can uh, start to domain, uh, demonstrate on how to create the e-portfolio, right? Uh, that would be good. But one more question. Uh -huh. uh, that question is actually addressed by uh, Dr. Rosita. She, she mm -hmm. asked, uh, does UPM student able to use the subscript accounts? Uh, I don't know. Previously, I asked my student to try. Uh, they said uh, they cannot. Uh, cannot uh, use it as a, their e-portfolio because they need to subscribe something. I don't know if uh, it is possible. I, I don't know. Okay. Maybe maybe Kate can answer it for, for this. But they, they can post on different platform and then you compile here. Right? Uh, yes, true. Okay, uh, uh, like for example, this uh, student e-portfolio, one, I, I click one of example is uh, in the Instagram part. So the student uh, show uh, the process of creating this uh, waste art, for example, uh, starting from this one is uh, not, uh, not so good in terms of the, the step, but uh, we have, okay, let me click on someone who, uh, um, Okay, maybe this one, uh, the step is more clear. Like uh, they just uh, share some photo and uh, the caption of the photo is actually the, the step or the process how they uh, design and produce uh, the artwork. Okay. So actually I, I encourage uh, my student uh, to explore what platform is uh, comfortable for them uh, to, to access and to share publicly. So most of them are using Instagram and I don't mind about it, uh, but some of them also create their own uh, website, like this student. Uh, so later it more easy for her uh, to organize project by project. Okay, I, I think uh, that's my answer on the e-portfolio from the student as a part of the assignment. Okay, so I think I can start uh, to dem uh, demonstrate on how to create uh, the e-portfolio from scratch. 
Okay, if you don't have any idea at all, you can see some example given uh, by the side, like uh, you need uh, some inspiration on how how to how the layout, how the content should be, and so on. Okay, this is just a quick uh, quick uh, overview on some of existing portfolio. And most of the example is on the photography and graphic works. Uh, I didn't see any portfolio from teaching part like me. Uh, I, I don't know whether it is the first time or right. Okay. So as you can see, if you don't have your Adobe uh, Creative Cloud uh, ID, you can just create uh, start with uh, this uh, box, uh, get started free. Okay. And then you just um, click whether you want to go for the welcome page or gallery of work. As for me, uh, I, did, I didn't start with the welcome page because uh, I want to create e portfolio. I, I didn't intend to have a beautiful website. Uh, but I intend to compile all the materials that I have. So I straight forward to the uh, gallery of work types of uh, layout, okay? It's up to you if you want to have a beautiful uh, welcoming page, for example, for your website. So uh, you, can, you can see this is uh, some of uh, the, currently they have about 12. Uh, mid theme, so you can choose which one is suitable for you. As uh, for me, I like uh, something that clean, white, uh, or grey uh, that can emphasize on my uh, work. So I choose this. But before that, uh, you can see right uh, the 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 layout. Okay, this is the layout. Okay, you, you can use this theme and if you can see this uh, upper part, this is the layout if you see uh, this website using desktop and this one, uh, because it is a uh, responsive in design, so in tablet, it will fit and fix uh, like this. Uh, and if you uh, browse through the website using phone, this is the layout. So if you want uh, this uh, theme, so just go and straight go to use this theme. Uh, at the moment, if you don't have your Adobe ID, you can continue with your Facebook. If uh, someone is uh, really uh, follow me from, from the beginning uh, to create this, uh, web, uh, this e portfolio. So I will continue with my sign in uh, Adobe ID. Okay, all right, continue. So this is your interface, the first interface after you sign in. Okay, you can see uh, currently I have uh, the existing one, but if you are a new user, you will see this box and with this uh, plus button for new site, okay? So at the moment, uh, Adobe allow you to create up to five sites. Okay, so just click uh, this plus button. And again, they will ask you back whether you want to use a welcome page uh, layout or you want to go directly to your gallery of work. So as for me, I choose to use this theme just now. Okay. okay, see, you can see that there is some default given here, like for example, uh, this one is actually you can put uh, some logo uh, if you have, uh, but uh, as you can see currently, uh, it default as my full name, okay, sorry. Okay, this one is actually your uh, 
for your navigation part uh, if you click it will directly to your first your your interface of the website overall in, interface of the uh, website okay this part is actually where your panel for editing the editing features panel okay you can see this is the uh, plus button for you to add uh, to add page later on uh, this is some updates if there is some updates and this three dotted is actually uh, uh, to give you uh, your uh, your account uh, and where you can sign out uh, from this uh, website and if you click this uh, pfp word or this logo you will be directly uh, directed uh, to your uh, dashboard okay so you can see that currently i have one existing one and this one is actually uh, for today session so as you can see uh, uh, the the name or the the id for my link is uh, by default is uh, using my uh, adobe id Later on, we can change uh, this name, okay? So go to this edit side. Okay, this uh, three dotted is actually where you can uh, make default site. If you have a very, uh, if you have more than one site, so you can choose which one is your default site. Or you want to delete the site, okay? So go click on the edit side. All right, this is the title, uh, the title of your uh, portfolio. As you can see, uh, if you, uh, if you uh, want it as a default, uh, then uh, let it be. But normally I will uh, change it. So how to change it? Hover your mouse and you will see this dotted line and this pencil icon. So click this pencil icon. Or, okay, sorry. Click this pencil icon. And you can see here at your left side uh, in the editing panel. So you can change it. Okay. You also can change the font, uh, the size, uh, as well as. Uh, do you want to change the color? It's up to you, okay? And of course, you also can edit in terms of the margin of your title, whether you want to uh, increase uh, the top in then or the bottom. Okay. This is on the side, style of the your mask head title. And below your must head title is actually another must head text uh, for you to explain who you are. Or if you don't have anything, you just uh, you just uh, delete it, like for example, like this. But uh, for me, I put it as a, a senior lecturer from UPM, for example. Again, you also can uh, edit the font, the margin, uh, the color of the font. So just, okay. So it is uh, directly aut uh, automatic save your work. Um, this publish site uh, icon is after you think you done with editing, with adding up uh, any materials and so on, okay. So as you can see, this is the title, and you can see another box if you if you hover your your mouse here. So you can uh, have another option for your message. Okay, click here. You can uh, see that you can uh, uh, you can adjust your container text container. You can adjust your margin. And if you click here, you can see that you actually can put some background uh, inside, uh, inside your 
you must hit title or your website title. So for example, we want to put some photo uh, to, to get uh, this, kind, this kind of uh, letterhead or the head of uh, your uh, website. Okay. So upload some photo. For example, I use my own photo. Okay. Uh, there is some option. If you uh, put your background image, uh, you can fix uh, your image. It's up to you on how you want to design it. Okay, like uh, in terms of the size, uh, you can put it as a cover as much content area as possible or contain within the content area, for example, or you don't want to don't scale at all. So normally I will put the, the content within the content area. So uh, it will be more nice. Okay. And then you can see that uh, some uh, text here is overlay on top of your photo. So actually you can adjust okay, the emoji. Okay. So you can adjust, uh, it's up to you. Okay. This adjustment is actually to beautify your, uh, your website. If you don't have time, you just uh, go for the default setting. Okay. Uh, Okay. On the navigation part, actually you can uh, do some uh, adjustment as well later on. Uh, but later I will uh, show you after I already have uh, any materials and what is the, the final output of the area. Okay. Uh, this one is for your navigation panel. So for navigation panel, for example here, by default it will put your real name. So I put here like, for example, teaching uh, portfolio. Okay. And by default also, they will uh, create for you uh, one section for work. You can customize the work. Uh, you can customize in terms of the uh, indent, the alignment, and so on. Okay. So to edit this uh, work and contact uh, by default, you can go to this uh, page panel. As you can see here, uh, this is where actually you can edit either to organize your page, which one is uh, supposedly on, uh, at the top, which one is uh, at the bottom part. If you think that contact should be uh, as the first uh, uh, section, so you just hover your uh, mouse here at this three line and then just grab it and put it up or down. Okay. Uh, this is how you can arrange and organize your page. Uh, this gallery at the moment is your home uh, gallery. Home meaning to say if you go to your teaching portfolio, this is your the first home uh, interface. Uh, so you need to say your fir uh, first thing uh, will be look like this. Okay. Okay, so you go to this uh, engine, engine icon and you can edit the gallery title. Uh, so, uh, for example, the first 
content is about teaching and learning innovation. Okay. At the oh, sorry, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't enter. Uh, to make sure that uh, whatever changes you make is auto save after you type. You need to enter, uh, tap the enter button. So it will change uh, and save your changes. Okay. Uh, this uh, button, uh, actually uh, you can disable or enable any pages, any gallery you want. Uh, for example, okay. If it is uh, your homepage, so you cannot toggle uh, this homepage as a disable. But this one, you can. So there will be no. Uh, if you go to preview, your site will be no uh, section for. Sorry, it's quite slow here. No contact. Right? As you can see, uh, this is uh, at this at, at the bottom, you can try to click and to see how the layout, how the interface of your Facebook from different devi uh, devices. Uh, this one is in desktop, in your tab, the portrait, landscape port uh, tab, phone. Okay. So you can see if you uh, still not satisfied with the position, so you can edit it later. Okay. Uh, don't publish yet. Back go back to the uh, back to edit uh, page okay the contact see okay um other features in this editing tab editing panel you can see this one is integration integration is actually you can inter integrate with other adobe accounts such as a behance or lightroom and then at the moment, I didn't have any. And this uh, icon is for you to choose or to switch uh, from existing, existing thing that you choose before to another that uh, you think more appropriate or suitable to your content. Right? Uh, Dr. Takia, uh, yes. I, have, I have actually received a few discussion in the YouTube and also some on uh -huh. Zoom and through private message also. Uh -huh. They're actually asking, is this e-portfolio is for us to print it out, download it down, or display on our blogs? So uh, we, we want to clarify the expectations before we continue. So okay. can you help us to clarify this? Uh, at the moment, I didn't see any features that uh, we can download our material from. I mean, uh, if you want directly print your e-portfolio and so on. Uh, I don't know uh, whether it, it is possible or not. Uh, maybe later, I, if I have the answer, I will give to you. Uh, at the moment, it is just a broadcast uh, website, I think. Okay. Uh, anything, uh, any more, uh, Dr. Chang, or I can proceed? Uh, so far, there's few uh, questions that we can actually discuss at the end. All right, okay. So, right. Thanks. All right, so as you can see, uh, you can start to add your work, okay? You can see here, this is uh, the dotted line uh, box with the plus button at page. Uh, beside uh, this button, you also can use this button at the editing panel. Okay, just click add button and straight to page. Like uh, you are actually creating a new, uh, a new, a new subsection or a new content to your. Uh, current uh, destination or current page for teaching and learning innovation. So for example, here I put my teaching philosophy. Okay, so I quit. Uh, if you have more than one gallery, you can choose 
uh, where this uh, new uh, new page uh, to be set in. Okay, so at the moment I only have one, so I create. Okay, so now you are directed into this interface. As you can see, you can start building your page uh, using a different types of materials, such as image, text. Uh, for image, if you have only single image, you use uh, this icon. But if you have, uh, like for example, just now I have my teaching portfolio, right? Uh, that I convert it into an uh, image file. So just use this photo break. And Lightroom is actually uh, for you to sync with your existing uh, Lightroom account. Uh, for video, uh, either you want to share your video or audio using the original uh, file, like a movie file or MP3 or MP4, you can use it, but Sometimes it's a, it, it will take you a longer time to upload it. Uh, normally, I will use the existing embed file from YouTube channel, for example. Uh, it is a more advisable. And this button is actually where you can link uh, other website link inside your teaching portfolio. And this social icon, as you can see, you can add your social profile or your other uh, social media platform inside your uh, inside your portfolio and the last is the form that's now in the form also you can edit it later if you want to add uh, like answer your answer uh, your answer for first question your answer for second questions but Actually, this portfolio or e-portfolio also can be used as a medium, a platform for you to, uh, to, to do your e-learning as well, okay? So for example, for teaching portfolio, uh, teaching philosophy, I use a single uh, image. Is this one it is in a4 size but you can edit it as a, a more smaller image fine okay go to this uh, fan button go to width and alignment and margin okay so for example i want to use a more smaller okay so this is your first content, all right? Uh, so you can preview it, like your teaching philosophy is actually based on your beyond typical. Uh, beyond typical is a, something that you uh, look forward in your teaching and learning. Okay, back to edit. You also can uh, put some caption or description of whatever image is shared. So it's just that if you hover uh, on top of this uh, image, you will see this plus button. It's either at the upper part, the bottom part, or the left and the right side. Okay, like for example, I want to put uh, some explanation at the bottom part. So I click text. Yeah. Let me see whether I open my portfolio. I just copy and paste my previous uh, hard copy portfolio. Okay. Like uh, my statement here, uh, I just copy it. And then I bring this one. Just now, where is the text box? Okay, and enter. And then, okay. Okay. So as you can see, uh, you, you can adjust uh, in terms of the alignment, the margin, and so on. So, okay. 
Okay. Uh, I just give you some example uh, from whatever I have inside my portfolio. All right. So, okay. So if you want to, to change, okay. You can see here, uh, you can change in terms of, uh, do you want to, to change the paragraph as a header or subheader? You can change the fonts style, the font size, the color, and whether you want to uh, the, the, the alignment in the left side or at the center or the right. Okay. So let's see the preview of the side. So you will have this your teaching philosophy. So done with one uh, material inside your teaching portfolio. Okay, let us try to have other types of uh, materials. Like for example, we want to add another materials for our, uh, this one is, it will uh, be, uh, as a one of inside the teaching and learning innovation page. If you want to have another gallery, another section like what I did before, I have a teaching learning, uh, like for example, this one. Wait, huh? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. All right, okay. Uh, like for example, I have a section uh, teaching and learning innovation. I have a quick guide step by step. I have knowledge uh, sharing and transfer. And uh, for today, uh, today material, I already uh, uploaded inside my uh, portfolio. So you can create a new gallery, okay? Create new gallery. So you put, for example, your learning, Outcomes. Okay. Create. All right. So as you can see, uh, this is actually your new project or new page for your content. Um, go to your page here. Sorry, the, the, the line is not so good. Okay. I cannot enter. All right, okay. All right, as you can see, uh, you want to customize it. For example, the week uh, uh, to put it uh, more, uh, I normally uh, go for default. Okay. And then go to the side page. I don't know why the, the internet is quite slow here, sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh, while waiting for the, the patch to load, I mm -hmm. would like to comment. It's actually quite exciting for me to learn this because I've been creating websites using, you know, a lot of templates I have to purchase externally. And mm -hmm. now I realize that well, uh, because we have subscribed to this Adobe portfolio, there's so many teams, so many template that we can use and even you can link to my Adobe Lightroom uh, it's actually a software for us to customize our image so it's quite useful yeah thanks for sharing this so um by the way there's few questions here uh so while waiting for you to load the page they are asking can we save this e-portfolio as an image or pdf I think it's the same question they ask can we download them um uh, at the moment, uh, like uh, you as the owner, you want to have a copy, right? For example, right? Uh, I, I don't think so we can do that. But uh, for a visitor, for example, if you set, if you set, like for example, you set uh, your portfolio disabled for right click and download uh, features, so people cannot download. Only that I mean. But uh, if you want, uh, to uh, to 
to enable it. Uh, so, okay, I, I will show you later. Okay, okay now. I don't know why uh, my Adobe didn't. Uh, why? Correct me if I wrong. This is more like creating your personalized website, right? To increase the visibility of your what you have done is a compilation of portfolios. Uh, it's actually help us to design it and also pull from all the other platforms, for, for example, Google Sites, Facebook, Instagram, compile like to actually showcase our careers and what our, what have we done, right? So it's more on the create the website ladder than to print the uh, portfolio, teaching portfolio for, for submissions. Is it correct? Yes, correct. Uh, I think I need to uh, reopen my my Adobe portfolio website because uh, it seems uh, not working well here. I will, I will try to open that. Why? Let me see. Mm -hmm. All right. So, how oh, did you? Okay, I need to close this one. I don't know why. Okay, so as you can see that I uh, I add a new gallery. So I want my teaching and learning innovation as a top of uh, my uh, page. So I just hover it and grab and put it as a, another another subsection. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, if you want to edit uh, your learning outcomes, for example, okay. Uh, so here you have your new uh, project page and you can start to add page. For example, you want to add uh, EMD 4202 learning outcome okay so it is uh, fall under the learning outcomes so you create and i want to add uh, the psa or public service announcement assignment for my student so i go to youtube uh, one tips uh, Every time I give a student assignment, I will ask uh, assignment something that you need to publish in your social media and so on. I will ask them to use the hashtag of the code of our uh, course. So like for example, this one, EMG4202, so I can search it very easy. Like for example, I want to add this uh, learning outcome into my, into my uh, portfolio. So I click this share button. Okay. I'm so sorry, my unified line is not so good today. The signal. Um, see, it's loading. Mm -hmm. Nice. I would like to ask, like, uh, can you mentioned you can actually password encrypted a particular sections, right? So yeah. for example, I have a class assignment. I mean, I have a sections about my class and student post their assignments. Some of them feel that they are they, are, they don't want to disclose to public, but only for the classmates. So yeah. I can actually set the password for the particular sections. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, you go to this uh, engine uh, panel for the setting. We have actually advanced setting. Uh, like for example, for the name, kan? Uh, just now, domain name, you can change it as your, uh, because previously I already have a Zakia Purahono. So, you change it as Okay, I apply. Hold on, here, I would like to stop you here. Uh -huh. I see that's connect to your domain. That means we can actually connect to our own host, ah, yes. hosting. True, true. 
Ah, if you already nice. have uh, your website, your domain, you already purchase your domain, so you can use it. Nice, uh, nice. Very okay. good. And then you can see this is the home page. You, you can decide which one is your home page. Uh, this one you can uh, see your analytical who is uh, uh, visiting you. Uh, on the search optimization is where actually you give us some keywords so people can easily track you in the search engine. Uh, same goes to the custom meta uh, tags and so on. But I want to show uh, uh, to show you on the part of uh, site option. Okay, uh, this is where you can uh, disable or enable the right click to protect your image. Uh, this is one. Uh, normally, for my previous site, I put it as a disable right click, so uh, nobody can download my uh, images. Uh, but in other things, you can also give your password protection. Okay, but at the moment, it's only password protect for the whole website, uh, not uh, on certain, certain page. Okay, uh, I think that is uh, one thing I want to share with you. Okay, I think done. I don't know whether the YouTube, uh, why? I don't know. My internet is so poor. Uh, we, we actually saw the news saying that it's dropped 30% for internet uh -huh. speed. Yeah, mm. because overuse. Uh, mm. There's a news yesterday. So maybe okay. that's a problem. In that case, I will use uh, my previous... Uh, because I want to share with you. Uh, I hope everyone know how to... Uh, to copy the embed code from the YouTube. Uh, so I will use uh, from the previous side. Okay. Like for example, let me take the name. Okay. How to, okay. I use the embed. So this is, Example, okay. so this is uh, the, the new site that I created just now for this course. Uh, so as you can see, I want to add uh, my uh, learning outcome. So I click there. So it will appear this start building your page. So just click the end back and you will see this box. Uh, go to your edit panel, just space it and save. And you will see very fast uploading and linking your uh, your video from YouTube. Okay. Uh, this is one of the learning outcomes. And then probably I can share on how to embed from your uh, Facebook. So Go for click the plus button. Go for embed. That is okay. This is uh, from uh, Facebook. As you can see, if the uh, your Facebook posting is in a public setting, you actually can get your embed code from there. So just click on the embed code. Okay, copy. And go here and you will see you are having your post here. This is to embed uh, another platform, other platforms such as uh, Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube. Actually, as long as you have the embed code, you can uh, you can add it inside your e-portfolio. Another way, I don't know, maybe Dr. Chong is more, uh, more expert on this one. Sometimes I use uh, uh, this embed code uh, website. Like uh, this page, I didn't know how to get the embed code for this page. So I just uh, 
Maybe this one is. Okay. So I just click uh, the link of this site. And then I go to. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, uh, so this one is, for example, I already, uh, I already have the link here. I just put the link, I embed, and I have the code, copy, and you can add your page. All right, it's not valid, or oh, because uh, it's not in, in a theme. Uh, I use another. I think, okay, generated, okay, copy. Uh, this is another uh, embed code generator. So go here, put, okay. Why, why, why you cannot go on? Why cannot? I don't know. Maybe I will. It's supposed to be, can be used. Oh, I see. Maybe can gonna redo from the page again from the Facebook page because you are pasting the page. Uh, I, I don't know whether we can do for our page. Uh, but for the public posting, yes, we can directly uh, copy the embed uh, file. I don't know whether uh, it, it can be done. Uh, Dr. Chong, do you experience that? Do you know? I haven't tried to place uh, a group before. Yeah, nice. Uh, this one is actually for the page, but it doesn't appear this maybe because uh, our it's, internet is yeah. good. Uh -huh. Okay. This is to add your embed file. Okay. And then what else I want to show you? Uh, you have a teaching and learning. You have uh, this. Um, one question. One question. Mm -hmm. Can people submit files through the website we built? For example, we want students to submit some things. Submit something, okay. Yeah. Maybe, uh, like for example, we already uh, put some video here. We want people, uh, we want our students to submit something. We can use contact form. But at the moment, I don't know, uh, let's see whether we can uh, customize it uh, to to be at the moment you only can submit uh, in terms of the text and not uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, we can ask the student to uh, uh, to create their own e-portfolio and they can uh, they publish a video for example and then they only submit to us uh, their link or the address of the um, the website so you can put here and actually you can customize uh, in terms of uh, the name and the uh, okay this is uh, where the message will be sent to my email address by the top and the form the submit button submit the messages so if uh, people submit message to you, you can uh, give uh, your submitted message uh, to your visitor. Okay. And customize. Okay, here you can customize, for example, you want uh, to collect the name, uh, the email address, or you want to add another field, okay, another field, and you want to know the metric number, okay. 
email address and probably not a message, you want their answer. Okay. Enter. And you can see that you also can edit the placeholder. Like for example, here is a placeholder text, your message, right? You can change it as your answer. I think that's uh, possible uh, for you to, to do. Okay. Uh, so far, this is the function that you can com communicate uh, with your visitors or with your students. Uh, maybe later, after several times of uh, playing around with this uh, Adobe portfolio interface, uh, you can find something else that benefits to us uh, to add. Uh, in, inside our portfolio. Um, what else I want to show you? Oh, okay. Uh, another function is to, to link uh, other e-portfolio from your student to your uh, e-portfolio. See, uh, if your uh, page doesn't have a page cover, you actually can upload your cover. Okay. I use anything like yeah? uh, For example, I use this one. So your page will not appear a blank, uh, blank color only, but you have uh, some Okay. okay, so this is the preview of your site. So you have your learning outcomes. Okay, this is your cover. And when you click, you will see the content of your learning outcomes, right? Uh, Inside your name, actually you can uh, edit it. Uh, like for example, you put some text, uh, your questions here. So this is your uh, feedback, the student feedbacks on a certain assignment given. Okay, this is how it looks like. So, back to edit. So that is to me. Another aspect is to link with your to add another, for example, under learning outcomes is e portfolio for uh, EMG EMG two two o for e portfolio. So you create some learning outcomes. Okay, see this uh, function, button function. Uh, just click this uh, function button and then you will see this box, edit this button. Click this button and click this pencil, edit the button. Like for example, okay. okay. How, how to how to make this annotate uh, function disappear from my <laughs> uh, I cannot see my uh, uh, this one under the window oh yeah under the window okay. window window button I'm not familiar with F Max but okay. can you try this one. This one is the uh, the site, uh, the e-portfolio from the student. Copy the link. Uh, normally, my student will submit the link uh, through Putrabas. So go to your edit button just now. Uh, so link to this external. Uh, I will make sure that I enable to open link in new windows. Uh, easy for, uh, for me to go back to my uh, own site. Okay, so for this text, this is actually work 
from Vienna. So I can put this at Vienna. Okay, I can change uh, the color of the button. Like for example, I want to use a purple or I want to use a green color. Okay. The hover part, the, using this one, maybe I want to use Okay, and this is where you can play around with your design. But if you don't have time to play around with the design, you can use the default uh, theme uh, that you choose before. Okay, so this is the preview of the site. If you have a lot, so you can add just uh, at the bottom, at the right side, or the left side of this uh, button. So as you can see, if you click, it will direct me to outside link to your student e-portfolio, right? Okay. Yes, now. So back to edit. We done with the editing with the uh, button with the social. Okay, for social icon, if you want to promote your you want to promote your uh, other social media platform like Facebook. So just use this social icon. Uh, like for example, you want to use uh, this one. Uh, enable it. Uh, Dr. Takia, yes. I, I think we can uh, uh, conclude here, uh -huh. wrap up here, and uh -huh. also we have some questions to discuss. Okay. So, because uh, from the demonstration you have shown us, it's actually the interface is drop and drag and drop, and it's mm -hmm. actually if we use the blocking, it's actually quite similar and uh, the features is actually straightforward yes. so um so maybe you can conclude your section and then we move to discussions okay i think that's all uh basically i want uh, i want to show you that actually uh, this site also can be uh, shared in your picture bus for the last uh, part I, I just want to show you uh, as long as you can get the embed uh, embed code so you can uh, share uh, your e-portfolio inside your picture bus. Okay. Okay. So, okay, like this, for example, this one. Okay, I use embed B. Uh, for example, this one. Uh, so, Basically, I, I think uh, ePortfolio is the best uh, platform for you to compile your uh, teaching and learning materials. And you can organize and you can manage your page according to years, according to uh, subject and so on. I think that's all for me. Uh, I pass back to Dr. Chong. Thank you. So we have few discussions here. Mm -hmm. So, okay, uh, one is the comment from Prof Hayani. She said that uh, the subscription of Adobe products is actually by Kementerian, but however, it's, it's very underused. So, she highly recommend people to use uh, the, the Adobe products so that, uh, you know, uh, the Kementerian will not end the subscriptions. Mm -hmm. So, there's a few questions. Uh, another question from Dr. Rashidi. Which one you prefer? The purpose of teaching, of in terms of purpose of teaching and learning, uh, mm -hmm. to use Putra Plus or to use ePortfolio. I think it's two different things, but can complement each others. Where mm -hmm. you know, uh, for my opinions, uh, Putra Plus is for us to assess, put our teaching materials, uh, but it's for a specific audience. And portfolio is more on, uh, public views. So yes. what's your opinion? Uh, my opinion, uh, yes, I think it is a compliment fact also. I, I agree with Dr. Chong. And 
Putra Blast has a more function uh, to have a synchronized, a synchronized uh, interaction compared to the ePortfolio platform. But the best part of ePortfolio is you can compile everything. Everything you have, including the learning outcomes and so on. Uh, at the moment, uh, when, when students submit their assignment, we need to download it. Uh, so sometimes we don't have space inside our laptop. So I think uh, by having this ePortfolio is a good uh, platform uh, to compile uh, any good or any, any, any progress in your learning outcomes and learning materials. For what I can see is like this ePortfolio, we can showcase all the things, the materials or all the semester matters inside a, a organized uh, website like ePortfolio. If you put all this into the uh, Putra Brass, it's going to, you know, uh, some <coughs> Im important assignment or important slide will be buried around. So it's actually complement to each other, as I say. Um, it's more Putra Bar is more focused, and then uh, ePortfolio is more like it's also for teaching and learning. Student can view like, for example, this assignment how the previous student done, so they can create on your ePortfolio. If you put all this information into the Putra Bar, maybe it's quite messy. It depends how on how you organize. So I think it's still both are very equally important, and depends on how we do it, right? Yes. Okay, uh, there's one question. Uh, what is the storage, storage limit for FIPS free subscription? And then uh, Dr. Josephine say uh, that she have a problem to log in with UPM ID. Uh, so, maybe if you have a problem with uh, logging with your UPM ID because you didn't apply for the Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, I think somewhere in August 2018, IDEC uh, already emailed to us whether we want to use this subscription. Uh, IDEC will assist you on this matter. I think I, I don't know whether now they still accept uh, the application or not. Uh, but in 2018, uh, if you apply to use other uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, so you can access uh, this Adobe portfolio freely. Um, yeah, so they should they should contact with IDEX oh, for yeah. open the subscription. So yeah. the question is like uh, the question of Dr. Sabrina, the storage or remit I checked uh, is actually two gig for free member. Yes, yeah, free member is two gig. But uh, for us, if we subscribe, it's actually is a uh, limited limited pages, limited numbers. So far as I I think I know. All right, I think it's a great shelling and it's very excited for me to, you know, I want to try out because I, you know, purchased so many templates using all the money. So now it's like, uh, I, I will contact IDEC also to open this IDEC crowd. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.